Welcome all summon. One of my most viewed videos on this channel is the one I did about the Germanic versus Scandinavian tribes. And people have been asking for uh, more about this, so I'll do another. Uh, but this one is going to be solely focused on the religion. Uh, so the reason that we associate the Norse gods like Thor and Odin with Scandinavia is just because that, that was the last place in the world to be worshipping these gods. And it's also where 95% of our written sources on these gods come from. Really, most of them are Icelandic texts, but uh, these gods and this Norse religion was practiced all over the Germanic world. It's not a Norse religion, it's a Germanic religion. In this video, I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, the religion of each of these different uh, Germanic areas, and especially how long they remained pagan before turning to Christianity. To organize this the easiest, we can look at a migration map. The Germanic tribes, they spread out uh, very far later on in time, but the real original homelands of the Germanic tribes is really Scandinavia and, and a little bit of northern Germany. That's that's where we called home for thousands of years. Most of Europe actually was Celtic originally. Then slowly the Germanic tribes migrated into other areas that we see here. Now this, this is the area that the Romans called Germania. That's the famous thing that we have all heard of. It includes you know, most of Germany, you know, Netherlands, and little parts of Belgium, and Poland, Czech Republic, things like that uh, going into the east. So the Germanic gods were worshipped in all of these places for definitely a few hundred years uh, or longer and there would have been very little difference in our religion at this time. We were all speaking a language called Proto-Germanic at this time and all of us would have called our gods uh, Wodanas and Thundras, for example. Super cool language, I know. Uh, then we start to split up at a certain time. The biggest expansion of the Germanic peoples ever that they've really done is uh, in the migration period, as it's famously called, and that's what we see here. It starts in about the 300s, and the, the, this is really where we start to see the first major split in our Germanic language and religion. Uh, so let's just start off in the east, because really the biggest migration was by the Goths, which were uh, tribes from uh, Gutlum in Sweden. Uh, now, they didn't remain pagan for very long once they migrated down towards southeastern Europe. Um, we know this because the very first full coherent text of any Germanic language is actually a Gothic translation of the Bible from the uh, 300s. So, a very, very early text. So, scholars assume that uh, these Goths were all Christianized at this time. You know, this is my problem with these so-called scholarly people. They see Christianization as a strict cutoff line, like white and black. When in reality, uh, after a people become Christian, there is always a good chunk of the population who practices paganism privately. And this happens for many generations after. And then, even after that, they practice pagan religion, uh, like traditions and uh, holidays for hundreds or even thousands of years later. Uh, yes, some of them have still not died out. So, yes, maybe the Goths didn't worship Thor and Odin anymore uh, by the time they got into Eastern Europe and other places, but ancient pagan traditions some of them have never died out. They're still being practiced there. So just be aware of that. The dates that I'm saying here in this video, that's just the kind of official Christianization dates that the scholars have put forward. But just remember that paganism probably continued much longer in all of these places than, uh, than what is officially uh, mentioned. Um, but anyway, then we see the further migration of these Goths all throughout the south of Europe. They brought their Germanic language and traditions with them for sure, but they were not worshipping the Germanic gods anymore by the time they got there. So no real uh, Germanic religion uh, was being practiced in the south of Europe at least, uh, but a little while later, after the fall of the Roman Empire, we actually see the Lombards and uh, a few other Germanic tribes um, migrating into Switzerland and uh, northern Italy area, and they just took over there. They were kind of the ones who 
you know, the Roman uh, Empire was falling and these people just kind of came in and took it full advantage of it. And they they took over in northern Italy. This is what they call uh, Lombardy there. It, it comes from the Germanic tribe, the uh, Longobards. Um, so there was for sure a few generations of Germanic religion being practiced here for sure. Uh, but they did uh, assimilate and become Christian uh, pretty quickly. So yes, especially Northern Italy, there was definitely a few generations of Germanic religion being practiced there. Then we can move on to the West, uh, specifically to the Franks and Burgundians were the biggest tribes to migrate West. These were both Germanic people that migrated into the Celtic area that was Gaul, and they mixed with the population there. They also became Christian pretty soon after their migration in the early 400s, but still, there would have been a few generations, definitely, of Germanic religion there, too. Then, uh, we have really the most influential Germanic migration, and that is the Anglo-Saxons, where we... <laughs> they're really not English at all, but they're actually Danes and Northern Germans. And they started to come to the British Isles in the 300s. And they didn't just come in and assimilate with the local populations like the Germanic tribes did in other areas, which I just spoke about. They came in here and took shit over. They didn't really, you know, interbreed and mingle too well with the native Britons that were there. But they pushed all of them out and, and pushed them almost to extinction pretty much. So England... Uh, was now a Germanic tribal territory, and they were worshipping the Germanic gods um, strong for a couple hundred years. So yes, Germanic uh, religion was practiced in England for a long time, and from the three to five hundreds here, there was really, <clears throat> you know, not a huge difference between the Germanic religion that was practiced in uh, Germany and Scandinavia, some small regional differences and some differences in the names, like you see here, but still uh, a very, very almost identical uh, religion. But eventually the Anglo-Saxons too Christianized in the 500s and going into the 600s, uh, depending on where it was in the country. And after that, you know, we don't see much change in our, you know, geographical uh, religious area, to be honest. So the rest of Europe, uh, we can see as time went by around now, yeah, Christianity was just getting stronger and a better foothold in all the places that it was already established, but it wasn't making any successful attempts at Christianizing the Germanic tribes. So this last stronghold that you see here of uh, worshipping the Germanic gods were here in uh, Netherlands, a good chunk of Germany. It was called Frisia and Saxony at the time, a little bit of Poland, and of course Scandinavia. And they were living really peacefully for a few hundred years. Uh, as pagans with no problems, no outside intervention, and we do at this time we see some differences in the practice between Norse paganism and Saxon paganism, for example, is what we have uh, quite a few written records of. I'll do another video on that about the the full differences in the religion, but at the end of the day it was the same religion, same gods, just slightly different uh, ways of practicing that religion. But all that changed when the bastard Charlemagne came in and just really messed everything up in the late 700s. Not only did he make Germanic people in this Saxon area Christian, he tortured, killed, burned down sacred sites and trees of any pagan people who didn't uh, accept Christianity. So the people here that were the Frisians and the Saxons in this northern Germany-ish area, they had no choice to become Christian. They fought back. <laughs> they fought back hard. And don't, don't think that they were just massacred by Charlemagne because they really did some damage to Charlemagne and his army. But this was the Roman Emperor uh, they were up against and just absolutely outnumbered and that was it. Um, so pagan traditions and magic were actually practiced in this northern Germany area a lot after they were officially Christianized, but the Germanic gods were no longer openly worshipped, uh, at least. So uh, they, they were Christianized in sometime in the late 700s, but going on into the early 800s and even 900s, the some places remained subtly pagan, but um, yes, they were eventually Christianized. Now, this brings us to the Viking Age. Uh, this is where the last remaining Germanic pagans were, and they were Danes, Swedes, and Norwegians. 
And guess what? You're not coming in with an army and beating us, motherfucker. <laughs> they tried. They tried. Foreign forces tried to come into Scandinavia, too, at this time and Christianize us. But that did not work. Uh, so Scandinavia remained pagan for at least another 200, uh, even 300 years, really. Um, and even then, it was not a foreign force that came in to Scandinavia and Christianized us, but our own treacherous kings. So Scandinavia was the last stronghold of the Germanic religion, and this is where all of our myths come from, the Viking Age. Uh, really, a lot of the texts we have were not written down until a couple hundred years after the Viking Age, but the myths originate here in the Viking Age. And this... You know, this is the real reason why we associate the Norse gods and religion with Scandinavia. It's not because Scandinavia was the only ones practicing this religion, um, but it's because we were the place where it survived the longest and where all the texts come from. So there were probably texts about the same myths in other parts of Europe, in other parts of Germanic Europe, but the Christians burned all those. Uh, so we only have a few small written texts that come from Iceland, really, about the Norse gods, and that's about all the evidence we have. So that's why we associate um, the Norse gods with Scandinavia. But yes, of course, anyone with heritage in any of these areas that were settled by the Germanic people has a right to call this their ancestors ancestral religion. I'll say one thing that is very important before I finish. Uh, our myths, most of the texts we have come from the 1200s in Iceland, but you know because of the language and style and you know other evidence, uh, the myths can be officially dated uh, as being composed in the Viking Age. That's where they had origin. But the myths are much, much, much older than this, and this is something the so-called scholars don't want to admit because they can't prove it linguistically. But they don't even want to look at much older runestones and rock art that actually paint a picture of these myths and prove that they existed uh, much before the Viking Age. You know, even when the evidence is clear some of these times, like any of the Volsung uh, cycle poems, um, the scholars look at, you know, the linguistic evidence in Atlaquida and Sigurdi uh, Fumal and see that these myths, and they date them back to the early 800s, and they say that's where they originate. And I'm like, uh, well, hold on a sec. The myth of those poems is about the Burgundians and Attil the Hun, you dumbass. <laughs> those are real people that lived 400 years before the Viking Age, so that's when we can assume, of course, that these myths have origin. So yes, our myths are much, much older than the Viking Age. And yes, the Norse myths that we speak about are here and, and we're told to uh, the Norse people. They were also told by your ancestors in Germany, England, Eastern Europe, Lombardy, and all these other places that the Germanic tribes have uh, migrated. Slightly different uh, practices of religion for sure. Maybe even the myths were slightly different and used different gods' names, but the same general myths, the same religion. We can all call it our our ancestors' religion. So that's all I'll say for today. We see us next time.